You're watching the premiere episode of Classic Panel Pins from downtown Amesbury, Massachusetts, along with Mark Ritchie. My name is Kyle Bruce, and we're here to preview this first round matchup. Uh, Mark, uh, this is the only Candle Pin Bowling show that features three strings of scratch Candle Pin Bowling, and there was a, a series of roll offs to determine the five qualifiers for this latter series. And today we're going to be featuring uh, our fifth seed from Raymond, New Hampshire, Jason Paul. Uh, he's going to be going against our fourth seed from Newburyport, Massachusetts, John Starner. Mark, I know that you're very familiar with both of these guys. And I am. Yeah. What, what, what kind of bowling are we going to see from Jason Paul? Well, Jason is a big guy. Um, he used to pitch in the major leagues, actually. He pitched for the Atlanta Braves. And I've seen him bowl, and he throws a candle pin ball the same way a man would throw a baseball. Real hard, real straight. He's, he's really, really accurate, and when he hits the pins, they have no choice but to go flying. He's relatively new, coming back to the pro game as he was out for a while, you know, um, pitching and you know doing other things in his life. But now that he's come back to the game, he's really started to make some noise at a lot of events, pro series events, and you know, tournaments just like this one. So I expect him to really, really come in and make some noise and get it done. You know, one of the things that's interesting is that Jason and Rico Baldinelli from Amesbury, from that Baldinelli clan, actually finished in the roll-off with 577 and had to go to a tiebreaker string to determine who would make our show today. And Jason uh, came through with, uh, I think he threw 135 and that final string to uh, defeat to defeat Rico. And he'll be facing John Starner from uh, Newburyport, Massachusetts. And uh, this is a guy that you're very familiar with. and uh, Very much so. Talk to us a little bit about John. John is actually the captain of the uh, professional team that I bowl on. There's a scratch traveling league in and throughout North Shore, Massachusetts, and we have one here at the Lanes in downtown. And um, he's been the captain of the team now for two years, and we have a pretty good squad. John is the silky bowler. He's very smooth. Um, you don't hear the ball hit the lane very much. He's very deliberate with how he bowls, but he's very accurate more times than not. So it's the classic case of the fireballer versus the pinpointer. You know, John doesn't throw the ball anywhere near as hard, but Jason doesn't have the same finesse. So it really will be an interesting match to watch, if nothing else. It really will be. The winner of this first round matchup will meet Keith Beaupre next week, who finished with a 6.03 uh, in the roll off. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, Mark, is the disparity in the scores in this roll off. Uh, yeah. we, we mentioned uh, with. Uh, Jason Paul finishing with a 577 tied with Rico. We go up the ladder uh, to Keith finishing with a 603 and then Brandon Marks with 662. And then the man that holds the, uh, the house record, 1399 for 10 strings, finishes with a 717 in the roll off. So, how do you see this roll off uh, having that 140 pin disparity? It was amazing to watch. I was there, I saw the finals, and Brandon nor Jonathan missed anything um, all day long. And it was a shame that only one of them had to throw 660. They both deserved 700. But it was to the point where one of them had to be the first seed and one of them had to be the second. And Jonathan just threw a few more marks than Brandon did. They are both pinpoint accurate bowlers. Jonathan being 19 years old and coming up and making the noise that he has in the adult ranks has been phenomenal. In the last two years, he has been the biggest sensation in the game. Brandon has worked his way up the ranks a little bit, and you know, but in his, same thing, in his last two years, he's made phenomenal strides and done a lot of really good things, and he's having a career year this year. So by the time somebody gets to the two of them, they're gonna be in for a match. There will be no doubt. And of course, the, the advantage to finishing number one, as Jonathan did, is you'll only have to bowl one match to win the ladder. Um, as opposed to, uh, to Jason and John, they have to bowl four matches if they want to win this ladder. So um, a lot is on the line here as we uh, go to the lanes for our first round matchup between Jason Paul and John Starner. We'll talk to you after the match unfolds. Welcome to downtown Amesbury, Massachusetts for the season premiere of Classic Candlepins. Uh, speaking for the entire crew here, uh, my name is Kyle Bruce along with Rich Lamoni. And Rich, we had a series of roll offs to determine uh, the stepladder format for this inaugural season of Classic Candle Pins. And uh, we're going to be featuring uh, two quality candle pin bowlers. Uh, today, we'll also have uh, John Starner, who is our fourth seed from Newburyport, Massachusetts, facing our fifth seed, Jason Paul from 
Manchester, New Hampshire, and Rich, these are two guys you're very familiar with. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of bowling with them and against them in several formats, and these two guys have a chance to go off at any moment, and you'll see a number of marks up on the board today. Should be an interesting match. Should be a great match. I'm sure everyone here is looking forward to it. The winner of this match will face our third seed, Keith Beaupre, next week on Classic Candle Pins, and we'll be underway after this timeout. All right, we're about to get underway here with this first string, and we'll be featuring Jason Paul from Manchester, New Hampshire, up on lane seven. I saw Jay warming up. He throws the ball very hard and seems to get some, some good action. So he and John should have a very good match here today to start off this first ladder. Yeah, Jay throws it pretty hard. Well, he bounced that one a bit to get it started. You know, it's interesting how uh, Jason qualified for this show. Uh, we mentioned in the introduction that it's a series of roll-offs as he nearly converts that, that spare lead and leaves the kingpin. Jason tied with Rico Baldinelli at 577, and they had a one-string roll-off as he'll settle in with the nine box. And he beat Rico 131 to 105 to be here today with us. What I just learned today about Jay was that uh, he played professional baseball for five years. I did not know about that until he told me this morning. He was drafted by the Atlanta Braves in 2000, I believe he said 2005. So. Single A prospect looking at the 2-4 right now. Put it down. Right on it his first mark of the day. And here we introduce John Starner on lane seven. John very familiar with bowling in this uh, bowling center because the bowls here on the Friday Night Pro League. Comes in with a 123 average. Right now he has a split. The head pin, though, that's what you got to do. Is you got to hit the head pin in order to get to get things moving up there. John also has a 190 high single to his credit and a big high triple of 470. Opens up with an eight. It's going to move over to lane six. Features a nice smooth delivery. You, oftentimes you don't even hear the ball hit the lane. He does a great job with his release. He's very controlled. He's off the head pin that time. Comes up for the second ball. Just off the head pin again. He leaves. He's got three left. One, six, and ten. Let's see if he can convert this for the ten box. Pair of eights to begin for John. Sixteen after two. And Jason is up to fill that spare in the second. Has an early lead. Matchup. Just off the head pin, he ends up with a six fill, leaves the four horsemen left. As the early nine pin leaves the four seven, the four horsemen. One of the more difficult spare leaves to convert. Cleans it up for a 10. As I, as I said in a show earlier, I, I've always felt, I always try to go outside on the four horsemen and just find that it works. It seems like they go as one. I know a lot of people disagree with me, but. Well, it, it, it really depends on the house. If we uh, talked about it before off camera. Right now, spare lead with the one, two, four. Heavy 
on number one. But he was on the object. Finishes with a nine box on lane six. Jays for 44 after four boxes. for the four seed with his roll-off score of 589. And got a good break Absolutely. off the head pin. Carry an extra couple of pins there. He's looking at the one and seven. He's got a couple of pieces of wood against the seven pin. As long as he hits the head pin to the left, he sh should go. He's got away. He went outside on it. Didn't get the action he was hoping for. Score that a nine and 25 after three for John. He was no stranger to television. Was on the Comcast show at the age of 16. He was also on the Camel Pink for Kids program. mix there. Just off the head pin again. Leaves the one and the nine. Ball seems like it's working. If he can get uh, on the object. Good to go. Not this time. From here it looked like that second piece of wood was going to take it out, but ultimately it slid by. Shooting for the ten box. That was a nice shot of John taking out that single. Score can really jump if you can pick up single pins here and there. It's all about the third ball. You don't want to throw that away. Leagues, tournaments. Television. Jason with the early nine pin advantage in our first string. Yes. Oh, he's got a favorable bounce there. Just off the head pin, he got some good action there. And a piece of wood came up, came forward and took out the 10 pin. I'm sorry, took out the head pin. His second mark of this first string, 54 with the ball. Right through the heart that time. Barry's ahead, but he leaves the eagle. Does successfully get a four fill, though. With a 58 half right now. Jason averages a 118. A high single of 168 and a high triple of 408. And there's a seven box and a 65 after six. John is back up on lane seven, hoping to put a mark or two up to cut into that gap. lead, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's what you want to do. Buries it in the pocket, but he's got a split. Six, seven, ten. The way his ball hooks. I would find it very difficult to cut that six pin across over to the seven. Let's see if he can do it. He has to live dangerously on the right side of the lane. Didn't work out for him that time. Oh, that's the frustrating thing about candle pin bowling. You can be right on the envelope, can it? Not get what you're looking for. There's the nine box that time. He is 14 right now at the half as John is 44. John, a machine operator, certified machinist, also an amateur trap shooter, man of many talents. Let's pull again. The triangle in the corner consisting of the 4, 7, 8, and on the right he's got 3, 6, 10. It's on the head pin again, though. 
Good Watch things it. will happen if he keeps hitting it. Can't be like this forever. We almost converts it, ends up leaving just the three pin. Just slid by that object pin, but he got the pins to move. In the nine box. 53 after six. The ball came in advantage so far for Jason. Six out of that leaves the one, two, four, and nine. Tough shot. Yeah, you either have to go completely outside and hope the ball takes out the nine, or you're super thin on the head pin and it takes out the three, and your ball manages to just almost go completely straight and hit the nine pin. Jason is 74 after seven. Jay's a self-employed carpenter. Married and they have one of the congratulations and a big bomb here. And it turns into a hammer. Sometimes you gotta hold your breath for those, but it works all the same. Well, but nine in the pit in a hurry, and that reluctant ten pin finally fell. Let's see what John can do. He's very capable. Anyone with a 470 triple can get hot in a hurry, as we mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's a better favorable lead for him on the head pin. Use the left triangle. He's got the... Uh, two, four, two, five. Two, four, five. Penny drives it straight back, unfortunately. Let's hopefully he can throw one of these for the nine. Sixty-two after seven. So when we watched John warming up, um, he cut over the five, six, ten with no wood. So he's uh, definitely capable of making some big shots. I love watching him bowl. He's so controlled on the lanes. It's it's just perfect. Perfect speed, perfect everything. And it's just, he's never out of position. You know, if, if you have a fast approach and the, and the approach is slippery, that never happens to John. He's right where he needs to be every time. Which only makes things easier for you. Absolutely. And he buried it in the pocket that time, but got a split. He was looking at 5, 8, 10, and... Sometimes these are the strings that you have to go through in order to rebound and make a match of it. Absolutely, it's a long way to go. He's seven and a half to eight. Jason's back up filling the strike in the eighth. And of course he has two bonus balls. That was better than the strike ball. Mm. He's got a favorable piece of wood leaning up against the six. He's got the ten right behind it. Spare on strike. It's Jay's fourth mark so far. He's got three spares on the strike. He's moving right along on a pretty good string. Spare with a three. One oh seven after nine. A little bit of a bounce there. He's looking at five pins. So the one, four, five, seven, nine. That is quite an interesting array of pins. Takes out the head pin. Leaves four standing, finishes with a six box. 113 for string, Jason Paul.
John is up still looking for his first puck. Opportunity here. Absolutely. He's on the head pin again. He's 2 4 7. Got a piece of wood to the left. The two is exposed. He should be able to hit it, and the whole thing should go. There right it is. It. Beautiful shot. First mark for the match for him. 80 plus a ball here in the ninth. He can make up some ground here with a big fill. Especially with another mark, with Jason having that six box in the tenth. Big fill. Very nearly a strike looking at the five pin. A nice flat piece of wood right against the deck. It is further out, but if he red lines, I bet you just push it. Oh, absolutely. Right straight back. Good thing is he doesn't throw it too hard, so it's not going to skip and go in a direction you don't expect it to. So a nice conclusion here to this first match for John. He's 99 with a bonus ball. Yeah, and a strike. A strike to close out the street. So that was a great finish for John Starner with uh, three marks here to close out this first string. At the end of one, Jason Paul 113, John Starner 109, and we'll be back with uh, the start of our second string right after this timeout. John Starner is up to start our second string here in downtown Amesbury, Massachusetts. Finished that first string nicely here with uh, spare nine and then Strike on spare to finish with a 109. He's our fourth seed since he's the higher seed. He starts here. Straight number two. John a little bit off the head pin. Leaves a bit of a mess up there. One, two, four, six, eight, ten. He gets in that pocket and should go as well. I believe it's a little heavy that time. Starts off string two with the seven blocks. One of the things that we wanted to uh, make you aware of if you're interested in competing on this program is our October roll offs. Just John comes back with a big Barry's strike the here. Pin. It's the second strike of the day. We have roll-offs on the 13th, 15th, and the 21st at 7.30 p.m. And on Saturday the 25th uh, at 1. Jason can't quite break up that split, but he was right on the head pin. He's got that helper there. Sunday the 26th at 6, and then uh, the last semifinal will be Thursday the 30th. So, nice bid. Oh, what, what a try. And the finals will be Sunday, November 2nd at noon. These are all five string competitions. And Jason starts out this second string with a nine. And if you have any questions about these semifinal roll offs in the finals, Called the 978-798-5475. Jay buries the head pin that time. Manages to carry the 10 pin. It held on for a second and did tip. So he's just looking at the 4 pin for a spare. Slides by that time. And as always, you can... Send us an email to classichampfins at comcast.net. Jason has opened his first two. He's going to have two. John's 
up on lane seven. He's going to fill his strike. He's got a couple of bonus balls coming. carry a couple of extra pins. Looked like it was going to be a five drop. Turned into a six drop. It's not horrible if he can cut the two pin across. He's got those two pieces of wood nice up against the ten pin. It's not easy, but Makes he can the target do it. a little bigger. Yeah. Nice shot. He doesn't even need the wood. Good start to the second string for John. Seven with the ball. Oh, no. On the head pin again. Fills that with seven. That's a good fill, but a not a great leave, not is it? Not a great leave at all. No, he's looking at the seven, nine, ten. Maybe the cap of that wood will get everything moving. I mean, that would be that would, that's the place I'd be shooting for right now. Well, you provide the expert analysis. So I'm depending on you. He tried to move it from right to left, but... No, I don't think he had a choice, though. Right. Ten bucks. I want to call mention to... Our lob line judge and ref referee, the very studious Francis W. Stanwood on the lob line. And a punch out. Half Worcester. Everybody's favorite two, Phil. Oh, <laughs> I know it's mine. Well, I think the one five is probably up. Still four pins standing. Four, seven, six, ten is always a fun leave. There's a six, and then he sees 24 after three. But he has that big backswing and creates a lot of action. As we saw with his four marks here in the first string. It's not a lead you see every day. Four horsemen right, four eight. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, that's one, one way to put it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of other things I'd like to say about it, but right. I can't. Oh, nice what a shot. shot. Beautiful conversion that time. Spare in the fourth. So, after four boxes. Completed here in string number two. John Starner is 54, and with a bonus ball, Jason Paul is at 34. Right back after this timeout. <laughs> we are back on Classic Colonel Pins, the season premiere. First round match, first ladder of the season. On the line now is John Starner. Was 54 after four here in string number two. Almost a strike. That's his uh, second nine pin drop of the day so far. He converted the first one. Let's see if he can convert the second one. He's got a flat piece of wood there that he, I, I would assume you'd want to completely avoid. Just go right at it like it's not even there. Like that. <laughs> Spare in the fifth. 64 with the ball. John has seemed to settle in here as the match goes on, picking up uh, that momentum. He seems to have found his rhythm. Illustrated by these three marks here. Bonus. Spare leave. 247 fills it with a seven. 71 after six. John is all over the head pin today. He's only missed it two or three times so far. 
nice shot of him eyeing the target. He just goes around the side. He went outside that time. Hold that thought. <laughs> Jason goes just strike, strike on spare. My goodness. Yeah, we were. Uh, we'll pause for that question. Yes. We're just gonna watch the bowling now. My question is about the um, the sportsmanship. Do you favor talking to your opponent during the match? There are some opponents that I'm I'm very friendly with. So yeah, we will talk a lot more. There are others that. It's very professional, you know, we just bowl our match, throw the ball, hit the reset button, sit down. In the bowling community, there's a lot of us that are, that are really close, so there's a lot of camaraderie that we have, so, you know, we can joke about things, and, you know, and it makes the match more fun. You know, I mean, in a situation, if I were bowling against Jay, I would, I would rip him about the six film, you know, because I'm friendly with Jay. Somebody I wasn't familiar with, I wouldn't say anything because I wouldn't want to upset them. Understood. Six fill on that strike, which uh, gives him a 60 half. He has a six box. So he's Jason is 66 after six right now. John has an 11 pin lead overall right now in the match. I probably shouldn't have said how well John was hitting the head pin as he faces the 10 pin there. He's well, slipped out of his hand, looks like. He'll rebound. He was a little upset with himself that time. But That's interesting. That was uh, the reason that I asked you that question about that about the sportsmanship is uh, the one of the interviews that uh, we did for this show. John has a nine box right now. Which puts him at 90 after seven with uh, one of the inductees into the uh, 2014 uh, Candlepin Hall of Fame, Craig Holbrook, talking uh, his conversation that the rivalries that existed when he started bowling don't exist now. And there's uh, uh, seem to be a tighter knit group as John buries the ball in the pocket and does not get rewarded for his accuracy that time. Yeah, that is not a good leaf. Five, six, seven, ten, no wood. Luck with that. The uh, aforementioned Francis W. Stanley calling the lob on that one, but John didn't hit anything, so he just has another ball. And he does it again. <laughs> Five, six, seven, no one. the second time today. He did well just to get the nine blocks out of that ugliness. Yeah, I mean that was a that was a hell of a bid for the ten. If they made that a money shot, John would be John would be rolling in the dough on channel the old Channel Five show. This is true, as would we all. You know, I think a lot of it, the the camaraderie and stuff is a lot of the lineups, like you know, especially on Friday night, they differ all the time. So if you bowl in the same spot all the time, like I generally bowl first. So when I'm bowling first, if I keep bowling the same guys, I can actually build a rivalry. But if there are teams that change their lineups every time, you know, I can face a, time, a team three times in the year and bowl three different guys. A little frustration there for Jays. Has another six box. 72 right now. Some work to do on that third ball. Let's look at the one, four, six, eight, ten. Nice. 
Nice makes out. Him a great 10 out of that. Beautiful out. Puts him to 82 after 8. John's going to conclude our second string here. And he's 99 after 8. Three marks here in this second frame. Second string, I should say. Or stanza if you're going to be uh, fancy like Rich. Oh, I'm not fancy. No, I, I would not be Mr. So you're a man of great ability. How is the 10 pin still there and goes? I was going to say, how is that still standing? That was hit. Leaves just the 5 pin. It's a great bid for the spare. Yes, it was. at a nine. 108. And John will need a mark if he wants to get his league average of 123. And as I mentioned before, he bowls up his bowling center on the Friday night. Uh, and now he's got 1610. See how he negotiates this. I think this is one you want the ball on the right side of the head pin so the ball hits that piece of wood. I think if you try to drive the pin, you might be too thin and just it'll go right in the gutter. Like that, he was too heavy. Leaves the 10 pin. So John will be open his last five boxes here. Still finishes with a solid 118. Seven after two. Let's see how Jason responds here if he cut into this lead. That second string. That two pit slid over a little bit. Yeah, that gap is a little bit wider. It's going to be tough to negotiate. That was one, two, eight, ten. Spare on strike here would uh, wouldn't be too bad. So off the head pin again. Leaves the one, two, four, five, and nine. It looks like that's another one that we would call interesting. Mm -hmm. Two and four leaves three pins. Finish the seven box. And the string with a 97. So after two strings, John Starner holds a 17 pin advantage, 227 to 210. And we'll be back with the conclusion of this first round matchup from downtown Amesbury, Massachusetts after this timeout. All right, here to start, string number three is Jason Paul. He's down by 17 right now. He's got his work cut out for him. Starner's throwing a pretty good ball right now. Looks to me that he's just throwing a little bit, a little bit too hard. You know, you get a little frustrated, you tighten up. You think maybe if I throw it harder, I'll get more action. That was a great recovery. That, that was time. a great ball right there. You ask yourself, how did that not go? You know, I, we've all been there. And an eight box to start off string number three. 
winner of this match faces in our second round matchup. Keith qualified with a roll-off score of 603. Barry's in the pocket that time, and he's got the kingpin alone. He should, looks like from that angle, he should have a clear shot at it. Yeah, I would go right at it. That piece of wood started to flatten out a little bit, so now it doesn't look like it's angled correctly. He was not happy with that ball. I think he knew it as soon as he let go of it, that that wasn't the spot. He picks it up for the 10. So 18 after two. John Starner's back up on lane seven. Leading in the match by 17. And was our fourth seed for this first ladder. Split. It was a little full that time. Ball broke just at the last moment. It caused him to go heavy, but let's see. He made a cut shot before. Let's see if he can do it here. His chest off the object pin. He needed to. He needed to hit that three pin in order to get it to go over for the four seven side of things. So Jason off the bat picks up a pin and count. That's the third time that I can remember that John has had two four seven. And every time he's had a piece of wood either in the way or right there. My numbers are correct. He's hit the head pin 15 times so far in 20, 23 boxes. That, that's, that's pretty good. I'm sorry, 22 boxes. That's, that's where you want to be. That's a, that's a good percentage. You're going to get good results if you keep hitting it. John matches Jason's 10 box, so the lead is 16 now. Two boxes completed into this third string here. Six, seven, eight, and ten. Now that one got away a bit. Jason wants to rebound here and get as much as he can. Yeah, at this point, I mean, it's only 16 pins. You gotta get every pin you can. that one two pocket. He was open nine straight boxes before he threw down that hammer in the fourth box of his third string. Of classic candle pins. We're delighted to have you with us here today. Ball, that ball is just so smooth, so smooth, and, and you just want it to be more. And then you're looking at five pins. Oh. Got a bit, bit of a mess up there. But yeah. One, four, seven, eight, ten. That vertical piece of wood near the head pin may have worked if he had just hit the head pin only, but the ball hit them both at the same time, and I think it deflected it in, a, in the wrong way. That was a tough shot. It 
it will be an eight box. Jobs 25 out to three over these first three boxes here of the third string. Light hit, diamond plus the 10. Three, five, six, nine, and ten. No wood to help, but it is makeable. Yeah, this is one of those shots you just have to bury. You can't be thin on it. You're going to almost as if you want to drive it straight back and almost be completely full to take out that Worcester. And somehow it, it sprays. And we know John can take out the five, six, ten with any ball. So, you <laughs> know, this, that leave should be nothing. Yeah. Nine box. All right, so at the end of four boxes completed in our third string, John Steiner, 34, and with two bonus balls to go, Jason Paul is at 33. And we'll be back with the conclusion of this match right after this timeout. <laughs> Welcome back to Classic Candlepins. Third string here, and these are two very big bonus balls for Jason Paul here as he wants to cut into John Starner's lead, which right now is 18 pins. There's the four horsemen left and the nine pin. This is a very makeable leave. Obviously, the nine being the toughest. Absolutely. A beautiful it, bit, and he, what a shot. he definitely needed that. Spare on strike. Right now he's 53 with the ball. That was a great shot. That's Jay's eighth mark on the day. Let's come back with a big fill. And Seven fill. The two seven eight. It's a makeable leave without the wood. The wood there should help, especially with the way his ball breaks left to right. No, oh, I thought he was going to take that pin. That was. I thought that was great. Thought he put it in the correct spot. I was just about to say left of the red line. It should go. Evidently, I'm a pseudo expert. No, you're just an expert. <laughs> Sixty nine after six. Let's see. The response from John Starner here is Jason put up consecutive marks. John's open here in this box. It's really going to tighten up the match. Big time. Four horsemen left side. Even box is completed. This is an eight pin match, but tried to go outside that time and came up empty. Remember, he's opposite, opposite a spare seven from Jason. He's open these first five of string number three. That's what he wanted to do. Finish with a ten box. 44 half. It's a one pin match. It, yes, it is. I'm glad that you guys tuned in today, and girls, of course. Going right down to the wire here. Light hit. Diamond left, plus the 10. 2, 4, 5, 8. Makes up that diamond. How does the 10 pin stay there on that ball? I, I just don't get it. Especially with the piece of wood that went over that. Great bid. Picks out the front triangle. Still looking at the 8 and the 10. As a great man once said, the diamond wins again. Nine box. 53 after six. I said this is a one pin match. Final four boxes. It was on the 
head pin there. I, I don't like know about you, but that ball looked a lot better than what he's looking at right now. I agree with you 100%. 247 on the left, triangle on the right. 6 9 and 10. Oh. Wait a second. Just missed that object pin. And a good nine out of that. Nine box. 78 after seven. I thought he deserved a better fate. He was light, but that was ugliness. It didn't seem that light, though. Like yeah, I know. Like yeah. And a punch out. Sometimes you're that light and and it's a strike. Mm. And you say, how could that possibly be a strike? I didn't even bury the pocket. I barely nicked the head pin. And his ball seemed better than that. It, it, it's a cruel game. And yet we and love it. it. Makes a great bid on the Worcester. Leaves the four pin. Pins like this single are huge in a close match. But a pair of nines. Brings him to 87 after 8. A John? Couple, couple of 10 boxes. John takes the lead here. So every pin matters. John's going to want to put up a marker to really put some pressure on Jason. Absolutely. Good shot of that picture of concentration and focus that time. On the head pin again, it leaves a check mark left. Two, four, five, and seven. A piece of wood rolls into the gutter. I've never heard of that. Did you invent that? Check mark left? I did not invent it. Wow. Yes. I, I have a real hard time with the check mark for some reason. Oh, it's I, a tough shot. That's a good shot that you know, just made. I'd so. I'll very often take three out of four. This is a big bonus ball right here. Whatever this fill is, is the lead. Light hit again. It seemed like that should have been a better fill. He's got a six, six pin lead now. Brings him to 69 after seven. Object pin being the three here. He's looking at three, four, seven, and 10. Just slid by. Manages to take out the seven pin, pick up another pin. He can pick up those two pins on the left and make that fill work the whole way. He does. <laughs> nearly, nearly cut it over for a 10 box. Be 78 after eight. Jason's up for his final two. Big ball. Buries the head pin. Leaves the four pin. This is tough in a position where I've, I've been, well, now that piece of wood really helps out. But in a situation where I've, I'd missed a couple because James open for those two nine drops that he had, I would be thinking, do He's I want right to play that it. wood? Do I want to play the wood? Do I want to play the wood? Luckily, has worked out. He didn't need it that time. He did not. He would have been right on it. 97. And again, like uh, we've said, this is crucial. Want a big fill. That's his sixth spare today. Big nine. The 10 pin. Slid by that time. That's what he wanted to do. Ten bucks. Jay finishes with a 116. 
326. 326. Total. Right now, John is at 305. So he'll need a mark, if my math is correct. Yep. That big, that big fill put him in the position that he needs a mark. John got a good break that time. He was off the head pin, but he's got one, two, four. Really use this pin. It's all over it. Eighty-eight after nine. Another break. Just a little bit off the head pin. Leaves a one, three, six, and seven. If he's in that pocket, that piece of wood behind the head pin should take out the take out the seven. Yes. And he manages to make the shot. Big shot. Spare in the tent for John Steiner. Keep it on the lane. Clutch bowling there to conclude this first match. That 10's huge, you know, it, it turns out. And he nice closes finish. it out with a hammer. Strike on spare for John Starner. 108 for the third string, and he concludes this with a 335. So, our first round matchup concludes with a nine pin victory for John Starner, 335 to 326. And he'll face Keith Beaupre in our second round matchup next week. But uh, we'll talk to our bowlers right after this timeout. We're back at the conclusion of our first round matchup here, the first ladder uh, of our season here on Classic Candle Pins. And uh, we're up here with Jason Paul at the conclusion of this 335 to 326 match. Um, while it was a, a lower scoring match than what uh, you might be used to with uh, the average that you carry and the statistics that you have, uh, it must have been good to feel like you're in a sort of like a puncher counter puncher position with uh, the marks that you traded with John during that match. Oh, most definitely. I mean, I knew John was, as, as soon as he would get into his own, he was going to stay there, and I needed to make sure I could counteract that. So it, it was it was a good match, even though it was low scoring. Yeah, I don't. I thought it was a great match. I thought it was a, an excellent exhibition for uh, our first season here, our first match of the season, I should say. Uh, is this, uh, how often do you bowl at this particular house in Amesbury? Uh, only a couple times a year, really, uh, when they have tournaments that, that they do. Um, me and my wife come down and try and hit as many of them as we can. So it's, it's the name of the game. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Rich, do you have any uh, questions, comments, or sarcastic remarks? Oh, I'm loaded with sarcasm, but I'll wait for our, our winner for my sarcasm. <laughs> Very so what's more difficult, throwing a strike in bowling or throwing a strike in baseball? Uh, definitely throwing a strike in bowling. Um, much easier to just throw a, a baseball to a mitt. And they gotta miss it. That's yeah, that too. too, that too. Especially if you put it right over the plate. Oh, yeah. So, how did it feel being on camera for the first time? Oh, it was definitely fun. I, it was definitely a blast. I hope I can do it again some, at some point this, this go around. <laughs> People are allowed to, uh, we're going to have to edit that. People are allowed for to come back after this ladder, correct? Or is this only one ladder and you're done? Well, we're, 
the format that we're uh, considering here for the program is that we're going to have other formats besides the men's singles, which would be uh, skins or uh, mixed doubles or what have you. So um, I'm glad that you came um, to compete in the roll-offs, and I'm glad that you came out on the show, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good Jason job. Paul, everyone. <laughs> and up steps number four C. John Starner as he's <laughs> victorious here on week number one. And, uh, so, so the first question I have is, how long were you holding your breath on, on lane six before you tried to make that spare? Because you, your face was pretty red. Probably about 20. 20 roughly. seconds. I'm assuming. <laughs> it was great to see you make that spare. And you, know, you had to load it up. And you only needed two pins. And you threw a strike and made everybody happy. Well, that's how's one of the most. How does it feel to close out a match like that? Well, threw a strike, so that helps. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure I kept it on the lane. You know, no funny business or anything like that. No lobs? So, well. You got called that. for yeah, one. Yeah, I got called for one. Call right. yourself a professional. I'll try. <laughs> well, Just the, having some fun, John. The oh, whole point, I think, of, of this particular match is uh, because it was so close, especially in that third string, and while there were a couple boxes that you uh, may have felt like you had a lesser count than you would have wanted, uh, you came back big in crunch time with those marks, and... Uh, got the victory and uh, I think that's awesome well I've had some experience falling under pressure before so I mean obviously with the camera and lights it brings a different atmosphere to it but uh, no I just knew what I had to get make sure I put the ball where I wanted if it went good if not I tried you know do you find it easier bowling alone or having someone up on the lane with you? Because, I mean, there's different pressure when I'm bowling head-to-head -head with you and I'm right on the lane with you as opposed to Jay throws his two boxes and then you throw your two boxes. Did you find it more difficult when you had to make a mark in the last box by yourself up there? Yeah, a little. I mean, you don't have the guy that's next to you all the time when you're bowling your leagues and stuff. So by yourself with the camera and lights and even the audience, yeah, it does bring a little bit more of a pressure atmosphere than you would most. So. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week in our second round matchup against Keith Beaupre. And uh, for our entire crew here and Rich Lamoni, my name is Kyle Bruce. I look forward to seeing you next time from downtown Amesbury on Classic Candlepins. Thank you very much. Good job. So that's the way week one ends for our first ladder series of Classic Candlepins. John Starner with a nine pin victory over Jason Paul, 335 to 326. And I'm back here with Mark Ritchie. And Mark, this is the kind of match where you're grinding it out and you need to get on the object pin, carry the extra pin, get as many pins as you can on the deck. Um, and we saw John Starner come through with a uh, strike on spare to win this match. And um, what are your impressions of this uh, first round matchup? You nailed that. You, you hit the nail straight on the head. This was a grind out. Not a lot of marks, but a lot of 10 boxes. A lot of guys checking out a couple pins at the end instead of leaving a 7 box. They left 8 or 9 or even got the 10. Um, those pins will keep you in matches. And they'll end up winning matches. Even though this string, this match was only won by less than 10 pins. There are times when you lose by 10 pins and you look back and you say, I could have found 15 of them in there somewhere. But it ended up working out really well. John needed a mark in the end, and he got his spare. And then he left the right way of the day. The last ball he threw was the hammer. You get 10 on the last ball, and you start feeling a little better about yourself working into the next match. Now, Mark, John Starner advances to round two to face our, face our third seed, Keith Beaupre. Can you tell us a little bit about Keith and, uh, and the way he's been bowling lately? If you thought Jason threw the ball hard, wait until you see Keith Beaupre. This boy throws the ball so hard. He's 22 years old, I believe, and throws the ball unbelievably hard. And when they hit the pins, it is kaboom time. Um, he's still young. He's working on his spare ball. He's working on some things. But he did throw 600 in the roll-off, so he, there should be some scoring. Memory serves. He has a 202 high single. So we should be in for some big scores next week. Our second round matchup of this first ladder series, our third seed Keith Beaupre will face our fourth seed John Starner, the victor of our first round matchup, again 335 to 326. For Mark Ritchie, I'm Kyle Bruce, and we'll see you next week on Classic Panel.